we'll go through a little bit about EAL. We're a division of research. We used to be a school of environmental science. We actually have some major accomplishments at the uni university recently. Um, for a small regional university, we are ranked five, which is the highest ranking for research um, in uh, earth sciences, geochemistry, zoology, agriculture, crop um, and forestry. So we've got very extensive research at the university. EAL is all about um, supporting that research at the university. Um, that's our primary goal. A uh, little bit established in 1992. So we've been around for a while. I've been around for a while. Um, why don't I leave a university? It's a great place. I mean, you have such diversity. I get to talk to professors every single day, drill them for everything they know um, in a thousand different topics. So great place to work. Uh, it's about nearly our 21st birthday this year. So we've, we're just coming of age, um, which isn't too bad. Analytical services, look, we test anything, soil, water, plant, compost, um, contamination, acid sulphate, environmental this, that and everything. So there's very little we won't actually test. Um, so there's plenty there. EAL's research consulting um, and teaching facility. So we're fully funded from our commercial income. Um, we, our commercial income is there um, to bring in the money to support all the research and teaching at the university. Uh, that we do. So we give very, very big discounts to research, uh, but with the $3 million of external money we're currently turning over, that pays for a lot of wages and a lot of research. Um, so currently we have over $3 million worth of instruments that we've bought through the commercial work that we do. Um, and we currently have over 25 professional staff. The biggest thing our opposition um, labs team to say is we have all students running around doing all the testing in their spare time. Um, we may employ a student here or there, but it's all professional staff. So we do a true professional job. We have all the quality assurances to say that. History, EAL is independent with no direct association with anyone apart the university, um, which is part of the university. No fertilizers company, anything there. Um, we established in the School of Environmental Science. And I started that lab initially because I saw farming as causing pollution. Um, farmers don't like to hear it. Um, they're being fed a lot of wrong information. Um, the erosion they get from poor management or issues with management um, and all the waste of um, inorganic fertiliser is just causing massive impacts um, on the environment, rivers, ocean, reef, you name it. Uh, there are very big impacts there. Um, we also, about 15 years ago, we looked into alternatives. So we've gone into really working with the organic farmers and biological, I mean, I know soil chemists are simple creatures. We only understand N, P and K. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm absolutely convinced biology is, is as important, if not more important. Um, and I'd probably have to go towards more important. Um, but you must have the chemistry right before you really start hammering into the biology. Um, you can work all your life on the biology. If you don't get the chemistry into some sort of balance and adjust the deficiencies, then that's where you're going to come to the real issues. So. Goal in agriculture to provide accurate and reliable data. Um, provide farmers with an option for better farm and environmental management. So we're just giving um, data so that people can monitor their farms and manage their farms the best they can. Nutrient forms, a simple one we put together. Um, what we generally look at, um, that's the standard type testing. Um, so you have your exchangeable nutrients, your soluble nutrients as pools of nutrients and then you have your total nutrients. So over the last 15 years we're doing a lot of totals testing so we give you the total store of nutrients in your soils. Um, so you can see well I might have a Bray phosphorus of 25, I may have a Bray 2 of 120 but then I may have 2,000 parts per million of stored phosphorus in that soil. It's the same phosphorus, it's the same stored calcium, they're all the same nutrients they just need a releasing mechanism or a pathway. Um, to be accessed by the plants and by the soil um, structure, soil moisture. So look, that's all a pathway. Um, Christine Jones, I spoke to her many years ago. Um, I'm not sure where she is here at the moment, but um, she was saying, well, this total nutrients is still only three to five to eight percent of the soil. <laughs> um, and it, it is. It's still only eight, that small proportion of the soil. But previously we were just looking at less than 1% of the soil when we're looking at soil nutrients. The other percentage of the soil that's actually a bigger box around here is the mineral forms. It's soil minerals, and I'll just show you that briefly now. So typical testing really just looked at this. We've gone one step further um, on the works from America, uh, what we've learnt there. But really soil, um, as Jerry pointed out, that's the typical oxygen content of soil. 
44 to 49%. All our minerals in our soils are uh, as oxides. Um, so they're present as oxides. Silicon's the next biggest constituent. Then aluminium, iron, calcium. Um, you can step right through it there. So you can see all these are forming different minerals made up of your clay, your sand, your silt, um, your whole soil structure. Um, and that's all part of it there. We can do that analysis by X-ray fluorescence. Do you really need to know that? Well, um, might be useful, but not essential. One of my favourite tables here is average abundance of elements in the Earth's crust. So typically we have the crust, granite, basalt, shale. They have different constituents, different mineral constituents. You won't see all those elements, but there's 70 different elements there. They're all naturally occurring in our soils. Mercury, when we do a soil test, we have um, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, so we can look at every one of these 70 elements. If I gave you 70 elements on your reports, I don't think you'd talk to me again. Um, <laughs> so I'd scare the hell out of people. But when we do your soils, we often just look at the uranium, the strontium, the barium, and it's amazing how much uranium you've got in your soils. <laughs> um, <laughs> and barium and strontium and all the rest. So there's quite a lot of diversity there, but I think everything is about diversity. Uh, for breakfast, I have everything I can imagine. I just love diversity, tiny amounts of it. Um, I think plants just love diversity. Compost is diversity. Everything we're dealing with, with compost, we add diversity in ingredients. We add diversity in what we put on there. And then we're trying to increase the ability of the roots to travel further through the profile, look for nutrients, look for water. Um, it's all increasing diversity of access of nutrients um, through the thing. So the future, working with land care, soil care. Well, we're doing land care, soil care. We work with them, try to give them good deals wherever we can all around Australia. I was just down in Melbourne in the last year and we had a great conference down there. Um, so we're, whatever we can do to help, we'll try. Um, using soil chemistry as a tool um, to using organic matter and biology. So it's a tool um, to work with the organic matter and the biology to make it all work for your system. Um, you can't go wrong. Access to nutrients at depth, we've really got to fix this compaction problem, get things working, um, get root depth happening, start really accessing the full profile. Um, soil and leaf analysis, target nutrient requirements. Um, so it's not, the chemistry is not used as a technique to justify massive amounts of fertilisers. Um, it really should be used just to target what fertilisers you need. If you can add those fertilisers to your compost pile and, and target, specify a, a compost brew um, or compost arrangement, then that's just targeting those nutrient requirements. Um, hair testing, we're moving into all sorts of things. Um, we can do the best hair testing. We can do your hair, the animal hair. What it means, I don't know, but we can do the analysis. <laughs> we can give you about 60 elements. <laughs> um, we can do fruit, product, nutrient testing. I mean, we, I have bananas and I... I'm over. Um, <laughs> where I love the taste of a nice banana, but when I go and buy them from a supermarket, they taste like, yeah. <laughs> Um, I look at the nutrient density comparison there and the ones that really taste good are loaded in nit um, potassium, nitrogen, calcium. They're just really rich and I'd love to do some studies on looking at fruit quality with that. If we can work out how to do fruit density testing, great, we'll do it. Uh, we just haven't got a method yet or been told how to do it, so we've got to learn those sort of thing. Food taste properties, we've got a whole phytochemistry department with millions of dollars worth of organic chemistry with machines that actually can smell. Um, so there is a smellogram. Um, <laughs> and weed nutrient studies, I mean I'd love to do weed nutrient studies, I've tested um, lantana and thistle and those sort of things and they're loaded in nutrients, they are really, really rich. So it'd be interesting if any of the groups want to get involved to pick up all weeds from around the country, look at whether lantana has the same nutrient composition in Northern Territory compared to Southern, compared to here. But I wouldn't just look at the normal um, 15 or 20 elements we do on leaf testing. I'd be looking at a full element testing. I want to do all the strontium, uranium and all that other stuff in plants and just see whether our, our beasts, why they're targeting a particular plant. Look at what they're eating and saying, well, are they got a deficiency on this, that or anything? It'd be a really interesting little study. I'm sure we could fund it our way or something. Um, there could be something done there. So questions later. Thank you.